Hi guys, welcome to 3D Tips and today we are going to do 10 awesome tips for ZBrush user. So without wasting any time, let's start. So the first point is handling heavy files. So there is a couple of things you can do. First of the settings, go to the preference and then MEM tab. Uh, by default it's 256, you can go 1K to 2K as per your PC. Then you can change the quick saves to 5 rather than having 20 of them. Then go to this edit button and every hour or 2 hour clean your undos by hitting this. Uh, rather, this doesn't have undo right now but when you have so much undos um, it will start lagging right. So you can clean undo by this, this button. If any subtools uh, going beyond 10 millions you can split up those parts to stay under 10 millions that will much faster and restart your zbrush in every uh, one hour or one and a half hour uh, it will clean up their caches and work much smoother now the second point is shadow box so shadow box is in uh, you have to select a sub tool anything append something and go to the geometry and turn on this shadow box tab uh, here it is the resolution how much resolution you want by default it's working fine so it helps to block out things quickly uh, like if i mask a gun something like shape like here and on the front i will mask like this then it will block out the thing like this so shadow works so you, you can then refine it properly. So third is getting a reference help with spotlight. So spotlight is uh, go to this texture and go to import, bring your reference and import it. So it is here. Now select this one and click this one, add to spotlight. So it will come like this. Uh, you can scale it up like this and Yeah, so and press shift C and Z to hide and unhide Z to manipulate. Okay. Yeah. And now there you go. And if the brush does not work, then go to the brush and samples and turn off this spotlight projection. Then it will brush will work. Okay. So it, it, it can be used as a reference like this. Fourth point is zap link. Go to the document and here is the zap link. Uh, you can save multiple views on this and also you can take renders from this. And yeah, like uh, this. So, and the, it has come with the two customs. So, after this, you can just hit make character sheet and it will make a character sheet and open it for the shop that is a quick way to get high resolution renders so as you see it already compiled it gave me full compiled image and it's pretty clear though and it, it depends on the documents file size if i make it 4k then it will be taken as 4k okay fifth point is Subtool master, it's under C plugin. Like here, it has multiple uses of these options. It's really cool. Uh, like, uh, if I need to fill um, basic material to all of these subtool, you can go to this. Uh, let me take it out. Okay, so you can go to this fill object and select the material you want here and keep the subtools on on which you want that material. Other uh, Turn off everything else uh, which you don't want this material and place select this material and OK. Then it will it will assign everything that's turned on here as a that material. And it also has export options. So which subtools are uh, turned on? Then if you select export, then it will export single subtool as per object. Uh, but it, it will still have this name so 
make sure that you don't repeat this name anywhere else so yeah the separate objects export and it has mirror you can mirror objects i think you know that or something so you can object mirroring object like single object and append to other object like every single this has and it has multi append multi append you can add uh, z tools object uh, multiple z tools multiple objects anything it will append this to directly to this sub tools okay so that is sub tool master it has lots of other option so you can explore also sixth option is gizmo 3d and gizmo 3d has this options bend and deform there are really cool um, go to deform and you can deform this like maya lattice so you can deform it like that if you want then there is another option called arc bend arc you can move the object like this bending in arc like this so it comes handy sometimes so seven point is vector displacement you can create a brush by your own um, you need to go to the uh, light box and projects misc then get this 1k template uh, yeah so because vector displacement supports overhang make sure your sculpt also have overhang something like this okay i will go like this and make it frame on your screen like face forward and then go to the brush menu set and select one of these brushes these are uh, vector brushes so they have their settings by their own so select this one chisel go to brush now create this multi alpha brush okay so now it's created it come up so it's here and you can go check with uh yeah. now so it's free and it should be drag and add yeah so you have your vector displacement brush here okay quick and fast so number 8 is decimate it's on the geometry tab geometry and decimate it's similar to dynamesh and decimate but uh, it's much faster and you don't have to undo it while doing it like uh, you are seeing this it's 1k polygon and i'm increasing it a bit so i am here now and i lose the details so i don't need to uh, undo it and reproject it and something like that i just need to reduce the poly count it, it automatically have that details thinking so it's keep your details it doesn't lose it after the reducing it so number 9 is custom ui make sure you have your custom ui okay if you are gbrush artist and using your default ui then you are doing tediously wrong procedure all this time okay you need to do your custom ui believe me so this is my ui and one thing you can do save your custom ui by preference config and save ui and keep that save ui in your google drive your online anything you use cloud anything so that if you use your friend's pc or company's pc or any pc other pc you can download write that down and install it immediately you should not use your default ui okay for to create this you have to go to the preference and enable customization and drag all the buttons you want like alt control and drag it and put it there where you want okay so anywhere any map any object so 
like if i want this button here then keep it like there and go to the preference customize you turn off it and store config so that when next time you open the zbrush it comes up with that option and save also this ui and keep that preference like this save it and put it in google okay or it's anything you use online stories anything so number 10 is back face and i is um, i know it's very common but still i saw multiple guys are doing this so uh, if you um, get a clay brush or something any brush and your surface is have thickness like this and if you sculpt on this side it will sculpt on other side and after some time the other side mesh is comes off on this side like like you see here it's come comes with double faces so it should not be there because because you will have issue when you get to baking or something like that okay so what you can do go to the brush and uh auto masking and there is a button uh is back face here so i put it over here i know multiple guys are known about this but i still want to share with you because so many guys i met they are doing still doing like this okay so turn on this uh button but uh, remember that uh, it, it it is not like you turn not it now and it will be on forever uh, if you change the brush it will go down again so make sure you have uh your desired brush have back face okay so now if i sculpt here then it it won't affect there okay you can see like if i turn off it and sculpt it see there there is a mess real mess so those are my 10 tips for zbrush users and please do tell me that uh, you like it or not and if you learn any one option from these so get give me a like and subscribe to my channel so so yeah see you next time